about a 40 pound ball of clay. First step I'm doing here is, um, is um, making sure that I have as much centered as I can before I add any water. When you work on something this size, you want to be careful about the amount of water you add to the clay because it can make it weak and, um, and uh, definitely collapse on you uh, when you're trying to get some height. So first off, make sure your clay is wedged, of course, and add it to get it as centered as possible. So you don't have to use a, a lot of strength when you're trying to um, center. Uh, it's a big ball of clay, so but remember, no matter how big the clay is um, or how much you have, it's probably not as much, uh, doesn't weigh as much as you. So your body weight can control this if you know the proper positioning. What I'm gonna try to throw today is just a, a large, uh, uh, kind of a flower pot uh, form. Um, I'm gonna keep it pretty thick because I like to always go inside and carve and make some interesting forms. So that's what's on the agenda today. Okay, now, got a sponge here, got some water. Um, uh, what I like to do is start from the bottom up uh, making sure that my arm is wedged pretty well into my thigh. Um, I'm gonna use this part of my hand here to do as much pressure as I can. My bone here, my forearm, should uh, not move. So remember, as you are uh, applying pressure to that palm onto the clay, you're leaning into it. Leaning into that clay, get your body weight to do a lot of the work. Remember, if you're just like this with no stability uh, towards your body, you're not strong enough, no matter who you are, no matter how strong you think you are, you're not gonna control that centripetal force, okay? Add a little bit of water. I'm gonna keep my, uh, my, uh, my sponge in my right hand and uh, squeeze and add water whenever I'm needing, whenever I feel some friction, okay? So add a little bit more speed, okay? But not too much. You don't need a lot of speed, okay? This is not a small ball of clay. Too fast could throw it off center. It's a lot of weight spinning around, okay? Here I go again, starting up, wedging my elbow into my thigh, okay, and I'm just applying that pressure upward, okay. This hand here, you can see how it has some traces of clay on my hand. Observe kind of where those traces are in your hand, and you'll see where the pressure is needed, all right. So um, what I'm doing is as I'm applying pressure with this palm, I'm squeezing this direction getting some finger lines in the clay, and that's moving that clay around to get it centered. Okay, here I go again. Leaning that body into that ball of clay. Keeping my body still, keeping my head down as well, okay? You do not want to, okay, have your head at the back. Make sure you're leaning over so that body weight can alter that clay. Once you get this kind of nice, uh, plateau here, it's kind of a southwest plateau, go ahead, okay, and use this part of your palm here to compress it down, okay? Again, keeping my sponge in my hand in case I need some water, I'm going to do a little bit of Spider-Man, right, and I'm going to go down. Again, lean into it. Put that body weight towards that clay. You can see how it's centering out. If I need more water, I'm just squeezing a bit, going down. Okay, look at the areas of where that clay is leaving traces on my hand. Remember, you're turning your hand into a tool. One more time, going down, using that palm, up. Now, a lot of this work is done because prior to adding any water, I've pounded that clay and compressed its center as much as possible. It's going to do a lot of the work for you. Again, down. You can see how pretty quickly that clay is fairly centered, okay? I do a lot of sculptural form, and I'm pretty much more of a sculptor than a potter. Um, so, you know, we can get it as perfect. Um, you can get as perfect as you want. You know, um, I like a little movement in mind, so, you know, always go with what feels good first, okay? I'm going to do it one more time, okay? Leaning into it up. Notice I'm not going real fast with that wheel. 
keeping that head still, you should be centered. If you're not centered and you're moving, the clay will follow you. Good. Next step, I'm gonna get a uh, flat rib here. Okay, and I'm just gonna clean up the bottom here towards the base or the bat. Okay, so I'm gonna go inside here and just do a little trimming. If you wanna go ahead and do a zoom in, you can to see what I'm doing here. Uh, the other trick, uh, 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 or one thing to watch when you're throwing clay is the amount of excess you're taking off and putting it in your bucket. Uh, remember, you should be able to get your clay centered within maybe four or five movements, okay? It's gonna take some practice to get to that point, but it, you can achieve that. Again, I'm going down here, I'm just taking off some of that um, excess that I flatten at the bottom. I'm gonna need a better bottom. Okay. Again, when I'm doing things like this, I got to keep my hand locked and my wrist locked and my body centered. Okay. Remember, you're turning your body into a tool. So learn how to lock your wrist. A little bit of yoga involved. Okay. Now I'm pretty good there. I'm centered as much as I want to be. Let's say you just cannot get your ball of clay centered. Well, that's where a flat rib comes in to maybe do a little trimming here. You know, a slight trimming to get off some of that excess clay, okay? But remember, try to be very reserved on the amount of water you add to your clay. Okay, next step, okay? I'm gonna flatten that top here just a bit, and I'm going to make my well. Add a little bit of water, okay? Now, if you can see how I'm gonna be using an angle here. Okay, every shape of your finger here is a tool. And when you work with clay, you're gonna use how to use every web, every corner, every angle, okay, that you can make your wrist to make the shapes. That's with sculpting and throwing. I'm gonna go ahead, make a little bit of, of a dip there. You can see that little small well. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to there Lock my wrist, again, keep my head still. Notice that I'm stacking my fingers on top of one another, so when I put some pressure down into that clay, okay, I have enough strength, and I'm going down. And if you want to get on top here to see the inside of the well, that'd be a good thing for you to do. Going down, see how I'm keeping my head still, breathing, making sure that I am centered. Now, when I feel a little friction, I'm gonna give up. I'm gonna let go a little bit, wet that down just a hair, okay? Plenty of water inside that well to make that clay slide down all the way. Once I feel a little friction, okay? Add a little bit more water. Now, look at my hand, okay? I have a lot of practice, so I'm, I know how to lock my fingers in place. Now, at some point, you're going to have to lift that elbow up, keep that head down, and then continue on with that well. There's only so much you can do bent over like this. At some point, you got to free your arms up, lift your elbow up, right, so we can get some height. A little bit more water. Elbow up, down down all the way making sure that is centered after I do that I want to check the thickness at the bottom so I'm gonna grab my needle tool here stop the wheel okay because I don't want to go all the way down to the wheel or to what we call the, the bat or the base okay so I want to stick my needle tool inside there raise it out, and I can see from the marking of my clay that I have about a solid inch or so thickness of clay. That's perfect for me. I'm gonna keep that thickness at the bottom because I want some clay down there in order to trim to make what's called a foot, okay? So that's plenty thickness. Now, what I need to do next is make that interior pyramid out because we want a, a cylinder at some point. So I'm gonna reach in I'm going to well out on the inside. Can't see that part, 
but in a bit, you'll see. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm gonna release my hands out. As I'm going, I'm moving my fingers inward like this. Beginning here, but moving them inward like this, creating a flat bottom, okay? I take a sculptor's approach to working with clay. So um, 10 pounds is not a big form at all in terms of sculpture. What I'm doing is I'm just compressing, creating a spiral inside there, just using the tip of my finger here, make sure my nails are cut um, short, okay? And I'm just compressing, spending some time on that because the taller that cylinder gets, the harder it is to compress that interior. Also, you wanna be careful about having too much water set inside that bottom. If I have a lot of water inside there with the clay this size, I can create a little slate puddle and I can weaken that bottom. So I'm constantly grabbing, at some point, my sponge here attached to a stick so I can get a lot of that water out as I'm going. Get a lot of that water out. Okay, that seems pretty well compressed to me. Okay, next step. Now, throwing something this size, you can start to pull pretty easily, but you can get some height um, early on by collaring up. So, what I'm going to do first, before I do any pulling, remember, what, again, this is an advanced level of form. You should already know how to pull, but I'm just gonna collar first. I'm gonna add a little bit more speed, and I'm just going to form this up. And you can see I'm already getting height without even pulling. Okay, always compress that lip, remember? Fundamentals of throwing, thick lip creates a strong form. Compress that lip, keep that lip thick. So I've collared once and that's pretty good for me. Now I can throw or pull, okay? So, this is already a high cylinder. I already got a good uh, 12 inches here or so. Keep that arm straight. Now, as you're pulling up, I'm gonna keep my head down, okay? And I'm going to, as straight as I can, lift my hand up as I'm pulling. I'm just demonstrating now. I'm not actually pulling just yet. But key is keep that head down, okay? And make sure that when you lift that arm, your arm is going straight up. Now I'm also applying pressure towards the center. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to basically make like a cone form. Again, head down, trying to raise my elbow up straight, all the way about an inch or so from that top. Leave that thickness there. Don't ever go all the way to the top. You need that ring at the top to keep that top strong as well as the bottom. Thick lip. Okay, that's pull number one. Okay, a little bit of water. Okay, pull number two. Digging in, bottom. Most, most of the pressure is gonna be at that beginning point of throwing at the bottom, and then you gotta regulate that pressure as you go up. Every inch or so, you're letting go of a little bit of pressure because you want that clay to have a uniform wall thickness. Again, head down. Right now, I'm letting up the pressure. I don't want that center of the pot to get thin. Again, all the way up, lighting the pressure as I go up. Again, throwing towards the center of the wheel. Digging in, head down, elbow straight, and begin to pull. Now, Watch your speed at some point. The taller you get, the slower you are going to go. Head down. Making sure that pressure is eased as I go up. Three pulls. Now, I'm gonna to wanna to stop there because again, I wanna to wanna to begin to fling, flare it out a little bit more wide. Okay, so now, since I got my height, okay, now I can make this 
about maybe about six inches taller, but not needed for this specific shape. Okay, so I'm gonna to start to pull that clay out and widen that form. Again, digging in, applying a little bit more pressure on the interior now because I wanna, again, widen the cylinder. Again though, watching your speed, okay, and your pressure, letting go of a little bit of pressure towards the center, widen it out. Compress that lip, always. Now, again, gotta be careful with that water that accumulates at the bottom. Try it again. Widen this out. Again, I'm putting more pressure now on the inside than on the outside. And you see I'm slowing down a little bit. Slowing down. And that's all by feel. You're going to feel whether that clay is going too fast or too slow based on whether it stays centered or not. Head down, elbow up. And the reason why you want to keep your head down is because if you are going up, if your head is going up with the, with the pull, well, your body is going in a kind of a, a bow shape. So I'm going to be going this shape, and that's going to pull my cylinder towards me, throwing it off center. Keep your head down, elbow up. You're going straight up and down. Compress that lip. Again, well it out. Again, I needed that thickness in order to achieve the height and also the width. You throw a pot too thin, or you use too little clay, you're not gonna be able to get the strength. So sometimes all you have to do is just put more clay on the wheel. Easy as that. Okay. A little bit of water, okay. Again, dig in, make sure you are throwing, make sure you are pulling Okay, but a little more delicate, a little slower. Head down, breathe. And pull. Okay, notice, keep that lip thick. That lip at that top will keep you centered. We want some movement though. We want some expression. You know, we're not machines. So if it's dancing, it's wiggling, well, it's okay. All right, now, now that I have some width, okay, I can go ahead compress that lip and now I can do a little bit of rib work. Now if you saw that, I remember I did four pulls for my height. That's all I needed. And then how many movements did I do to weld it out? Maybe another four. So the key to throwing large forms or just forms in general is knowing that the best shapes or the way to achieve it is the least amount of movements as possible. So I'm gonna wet my rib, add a little bit of water, okay? Here's where you really have to be careful about your water usage because that wall is a lot thinner. I'm gonna accept water a lot more and weaken up. But 
I'm going to use, use that curve. Now I'm using a round rib, they're sharp ribs. This has a rounded edge so I don't damage my pot. And I'm going to do a little pressure on the inside. Now, if you want to go ahead and go on the top here so you can see how I'm handling that interior. Slow, again, head down. Even pressure. Breathe. Don't force it. You can feel that clay stretch. Open up. And you can see if you have nothing but slip or real wet clay, you're doing a good job. If you got any real plastic clay, you're digging in too much. So you don't want to dig in. Okay, always sharpen that. Okay, and we'll do it one more time. Okay, you can also go downward. I'm gonna do a downward a well, meaning I'm going to, instead of going up, I'm gonna go downward. That's gonna help me out with some shape as well. I'm gonna open up that lip and then move downward. A little bit more aggressive on the form, so you have to be careful that you're not applying too much pressure because you're going with gravity now, and gravity wants to take this pot down. So be careful when you do the downward well. Okay, and then I'm going back up. Down, up, down. say when though sometimes you can't take it out too much again got a good amount of wet clay not digging in okay and as always compress that lip now I'm pretty happy with this shape I think I might be done okay but last thing is compress that bottom now you might want to see what I'm doing on the inside again because you're very important. And I see on the inside here, I have a lot of texture. Okay, I want to get rid of that. I'm going to get my flat rib here and make sure I compress that bottom, that foot. We don't want no S cracking or stress cracks. Remember, you are dealing with platelets and uh, they're going to want to shrink in all different directions. Clay is alive. Okay, so I'm compressing that bottom, getting my hand, I'm going to do a little sculpting here, making sure that I get a nice form here at the bottom. Okay, get that rib out. Now I'm going to get a, a, a rounder rib, give me a smaller rib here, it has more of a curvature. Got to be careful with this rib though right here because it's sharp at the end and that could create a, oops, that could create a, a, a damaged area. Press it, sculpt it. Make sure. There we go, adding a little more pressure, rounding that bottom down. And I think the key to throwing or just working with clay in general is understanding the gesture. That clay does not like to be agitated too much. It likes swift movements. It likes, it wants you to know exactly what it wants. <laughs> so in other words, you gotta get to know it. And here we go. 
You can see how that bottom has been compressed. Oop, I got a little bit of mark from a rib. I'm gonna compress that down. A little sponge work at the bottom. Maybe you can do a little swirl, right? Whatever you want, okay? Add a little design down there. I like mine fairly flat. Again, when I'm gonna do a compression, I'm gonna use my rounded crescent rib, not my pointed crescent rib. Making sure I get that bottom nice and compressed. Spending a lot of time down there, obviously. Okay. Can leave some design, some ringing, maybe. And that does that about does it for me. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Now on the outside, we can also continue to shape. It depends whether you like those finger lines or whatever, you know. Um, if you don't like finger lines, well, we can use the flat end, right, and do a little bit of a shaping. I'm just gonna shape the bottom a bit. Okay, so I'm gonna take that in. And if you wanna zoom in, you can see me carve that foot just to get some of that excess off. Remember, throwing or pottery or just or vessels it's all about the line the line on that edge that line okay going back in see how that's a little bit off I'm gonna put pressure on the inside bringing that wall in there we go nice now I'm gonna go up applying slight pressure on the inside notice that I have not wet my clay in a while Dragging that rib up. And again, you can continue to shape. Now what a lot of uh, people do here, or potters, they'll uh, let this sit for three or four hours, let it get a little bit more dry, a little more plastic, and then you can well out even more, right? I mean, you can put a whole, you can feed 50 people with this bowl here. That's what I'm making, big chow bowl, right? Put some arroz con pollo in here, big pot of menudo. Shit, invite the cousins over, vamanos, vamanos. You know, put a boxing match on, either that, or my Uncle Robert, this was my Uncle Robert's cereal bowl here, basically. He would eat a cereal bowl, I remember when I was a kid big cereal bowl, that was the 80s. <laughs>